Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for July. Okay, got a card that came out right away. Welcome to July. And it's the lead card. So it's kind of like the emperor energy. So this is a really powerful message of taking the lead, standing into a position of authority, your autonomy, your personal strength, your highest sense of empowerment, and really going after what you want. This is a masculine energy. And I am feeling, even though it's cancer season, I'm really feeling strong masculine energy for the season. And it's kind of weird. We actually have like Mars in your sign. That's probably why <laughs> Mars is kind of demanding that Taurus grab the bull by the horns, if you will, and uh, really go after it. And there's a lot of ambition, but it is requiring a lot of work. Okay. And I don't think Taurus is really afraid to work, especially when they have something that they genuinely want, when they have the passion, when they have the commitment, when they have the dedicate dedication, it's like the sky's the limit here. And Mars and Taurus is really demanding that it's like, okay, well, if the sky's the limit, then you better get going. You better get cracking because the sky is pretty high up there. So you better start cracking the whip on kind of like on yourself, you know, and like really get things in gear. Um, the thing about this, this card is that it's not entirely, it's kind of like the middle ground between being patient and being impatient. So it's not as though you're sitting there champing at the bit being like, ah, oh, come on, we got to make it happen, make it happen. And it's all fast and urgent, but it's also not as though you are sort of lazily plunking forward. I think it's a nice medium between those two where you're not just going to sit around and wait for other things to happen. You're not going to sit around and wait to respond to things, but you're also not going to be bulldozing your way through your projects or anything like that. I think there's control, there's quality, right? Really focusing on making sure you're doing a really, really good job, you know, because through cancer season, we really are establishing roots and there are things that are being implemented now, or maybe they were implemented before, but only now are they really starting to take root. And I think there's a a long-term or a sense of longevity about everything, which is why I think cancer season is taking on a little bit more of a serious tone just in general. Like generally speaking, cancer season is a little bit more serious. And I think Taurus is, is also taking things more seriously. You're taking your money seriously, your jobs, your careers, you're taking your creations more seriously. And uh, you're starting to see a lot of the potential in the things that you have going on, look at the bigger picture. And I love that with the leadership card, because it's like, yeah, when you are in that sense of leadership and authority in your life, you do have to have a very clear idea of what it is you're going after, what it is you're building. And that usually is a much bigger picture, right? There's more up there. So as you're climbing, you know, you slowly acquire more, you slowly attain more. And, um, and yet it's this big picture where everything is all encompassed that's really driving every daily decision that you're making now. So operating in that big picture is good, but also being very present and connected with what you're doing on a daily basis is also very good. I think it's the best of both worlds. You're kind of operating in this really nice equilibrium place right now, Taurus, which is really cool. And so there can get a, be a lot done. I'm not seeing tons of resistance here. Uh, I'm not seeing a ton of pushback or hesitation. It's all very like consistent. It's all, you know, you're persevering, you're going for it, but you're also ensuring that you're doing a really good job. There's nothing haphazard, nothing sloppy about any of this. Okay. So let's see what else comes out for Taurus. What else does Taurus need to know for the month of July? Three of cups. Let's see what the tone is on that. What comes through after the three of cups? Okay. And then we have the four of wands. Okay. So the three of cups, I'm, I'm feeling more positive from it, really speaking to your social circle, speaking to the people with whom you associate. Now this might be actual friends. It might be colleagues. It might be family members. It might be 
people you associate with online or if you're a part of a community online. But the thing to remember with the Three of Cups is to really make sure that the people with whom you associate are positive influences. Okay, that's the number one thing. And the reason why I said like, let me say how I feel about that, because my initial instinct, my knee jerk reaction was, you don't want to be around gossipy people. Okay, you don't want to be around people who are loose with their words, people who are talking behind other people's back who are, or even talking about you know, like whining and complaining things that are not good. You know, you don't want to be around that. Okay. Anything that kind of leads a little bit toward the more pessimistic or cynical route, you want to detach yourself from as quickly as possible. Because I feel that there's something fragile about this moment that you're in. And while you are really trying to take the lead in your life and really like trying to go after it, there is something kind of breakable about it. And if you get caught up in the wrong social circle with the wrong narrative, you can give up before you even start. And I don't know that that would be, I mean, I definitely know that that's not in your best interest. While I don't necessarily see the detachment and I don't see the, you know, severing and cutting something off, although we'll see what the rest of the cards come out. I don't necessarily see that. All I see is a gravitation toward higher quality social circles. So I'm not saying you have to get rid of all your people, okay, <laughs> or that one person that's driving you nuts. Like you don't have to get rid of them, obviously, but it's just more about spending time and consuming better messaging, all right? because it's going to make or break the magic of this magician. The reason why it's so fragile is because the magician is just a seed. That's all it is. Now, you may have things already in the works. And that's great. But I feel as though that through cancer season, there is an injection that is going on. So your projects, your endeavors, your goals, yeah, you may already have been working on those for weeks, months, years, however long, but this season it feels like, okay, we're getting a boost. We're getting kind of a kind of a push or a kick in the butt a little bit that kind of goes, go for it, really go for it. And that's the magician. It's that initial spark or the flame that gets ignited within us. It's a very fiery magician for me this month. Okay, he's really passionate, really motivated, enthusiastic, excited. There's new ideas flowing, new creativity. I'm not saying you're not going to be having emotions that go along with that, because I think there's a ton of fluctu fluctuations throughout this season. Um, but it's like, there are so many things flowing that even just one or two, like implementing one or two of these ideas can really launch and propel these projects in, in a way that I don't know that you would have experienced otherwise. And I look at this four of wands, it's like there's safety, there's security. Again, there's that message of high quality people. It's celebratory, it's festive. A lot of celebration and festivities coming through here. Being around family, being around loved ones, being in an environment that is like just really elevating, okay, to help you transcend certain aspects of your life because that high happiness vibrational kind of thing, right? That um, laughter, the joy, the appreciation, the gratitude, having big meals with people that you love, like that kind of thing is so good for the soul and it's going to really feed the magic of the magician even that much more. I mean, there's already tons of magic going on, but you might as well fuel the fire and keep it going because it's going to get, it's going to become, you know, really magnetic. And if you can keep it going, you're going to start really drawing in substantial opportunities. They're just going to kind of come in more effortlessly. I kind of feel like this happiness, this festivity stuff is more for the sake of effortlessness, which is going to help keep this leadership card in the middle between the impatience and the patience, right? Because if it came in too easy, well, then you could be kind of more apathetic toward things. If it didn't come in at all, you'd be all in the sense of urgency and it wouldn't be very balanced. 
So all of this energy is really going to help keep you in that more like, okay, well, I don't have to chase desperately after things, but I also don't have to sit back and do nothing. I got to find that medium ground. Okay. So let's see what else comes through for Taurus. What does Taurus need to know for July? We have temperance. Six of swords and the page of coins. So this feels very mild. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So far, this reading is a really mild reading. July might be mild. Now, when I say mild, it does not mean you will not have events that occur. Okay. We do have the planets transitioning from Cancer into Leo. Mercury crosses over first on July 2nd. Then we have Venus coming over on the 11th. And then on the 22nd, we have the sun coming over. So it's all coming over that fourth house cusp, activating the fourth house. We have a Mercury pre-shadow. We have Chiron retrograding near the very end of the month in Aries in the, in the 12th house. So the reason why I'm pointing all this out, by the way, fourth house energy can be a, a, it's a big transit. Okay. Fourth house is very powerful. Um, and that crossover into the fourth house, that fourth house cusp is a really powerful line. And yet, so I'm not saying things won't happen, but whatever happens, I think the way you handle it is so controlled and so solution oriented and so unaffected that everything just kind of gets channeled into something more productive almost immediately. So when there is a problem that arises, I don't see Taurus getting rocked off their throne, okay? I see you standing really firm and really strong, consistently in that state of empowerment. Like, I don't see any moment where Taurus is like, why is this happening to me? Now, you may have like a blip where that comes through, but you're certainly not going to wallow and be like, oh, you know, days, weeks pass. Like, why is this happening to me where you feel sorry for yourself? Um, basically, all that's going to happen is you're going to say that kind of sucked. Didn't really like that. That wasn't super great. But I'm going to take this feeling that it gives me and I'm going to understand that that feeling is an emotion, right? Emotion, energy in motion, right? That's what all like the new agey people say, right? It's a energy in motion. Therefore it is energy and therefore it can be channeled in a more productive way. And that's what I think the temperance is really all about. It's about stoicism. It's about that fine balance. It's about discipline and control. It's an artistic, it's an alchemical process where you are so self-aware, <laughs> you're so self-aware, so aware of the feelings, so aware of what's being stirred up in you that you really do have control over it. I'm not saying you can just will it to go away. I mean, you'll feel it, but it's what you do with it that gives you that control. And you seem to be channeling it into, well, let's move on and let's make sure that we don't ever have to put ourselves in that situation ever again. So really solution mindset or this is such Mars and Taurus vibes. I love this for you um, because it's so victimless. Like you're, you're so completely not a victim of anything. And I think that's what, one thing I do really like about the Aries and Taurian archetypes just in general is that there is so much emphasis on us. And therefore the responsibility and the accountability is on us. And we tend to embody that. We tend to really embrace that when we have Aries and Taurus activation, which we do. And um, it's just kind of that moment where we put it on our own shoulders and we say, how do I get out of this? I don't see reliance on other people with Taurus. Now you may surround yourself with high quality people for sure, but when it comes to solving a problem or achieving your goal, Taurus says, I'm the one that needs to make it happen. <laughs> and I can hire people and I can ask people for advice and I can, you know, get people's opinions and all this stuff, but I'm the one that has to do it. So you're moving on, you're taking whatever happens and you're moving on and you are taking it day by day. 
And just because you are in this high quality, high empowered position does not mean that you're not still in this student mindset. Because what's happening right now is that the people who are really ambitious about their goals are likely heading into an environment that they've never been in before, into a new terrain, into a new way of life, into a new type of lifestyle. And if you're really serious about full embodiment and full experience of this high quality lifestyle that you're hoping to manifest, you know, you also know that there's a lot to learn along the way. And you're not going to let your arrogance or pride get in the way and prevent you, right? Because sometimes we tend to say, well, I know what's best for me, but that way of thinking has gotten you here. And that's not necessarily the worst place. Maybe it's a great place, but I also know that things need to change if you want to reach the next level. So this is you understanding that things are needing to change and that sometimes that change takes time. Sometimes it takes new learning, new wisdom that needs to be acquired. Sometimes it takes you doing things you've never done before and therefore you want to be a little bit, you know, smart about it. So you're not rushing and I think you're learning along the way. And, you know, I, I again, I don't see that pride or arrogance getting in your way and in, in, for all intents and purposes, you know, this is an extraordinarily empowered position, this page of coins. This could also represent, you know, kind of a, a product of the magnetism that we're seeing in this top row as another person or an opportunity kind of showing up on your doorstep and you realizing that you are operating on that higher you know, vibrational, on that, you know, kind of that higher emotion, that higher scale, you are actually really attracting the very things that you say that you want. Like it's happening. It's happening. It's actually working. <laughs> you know, you're actually seeing some of the results you're seeing. Now, this is not a huge thing. This feels kind of introductory or initiating. And with the, the magician, this is what I mean, like you're just at the very beginning. So, I mean, it just, it feels like seeds to me, little seeds. We haven't seen the best of Taurus yet. Oh, five of wands, of course. Five of wands, of course, I'm not surprised because it's been coming out a lot in these readings and it's been the same message for almost every sign. So we'll talk about it in just a second. Let me pull one more card. A lot of movement. I mean, it is a, a moon ruled season. It's cancer, right? <laughs> moon ruled. A lot of flux, fluctuation that happens. Movement makes sense to me right now. Gemini and cancer, tons and tons of movement during these seasons. And you may not have realized it, but June, actually, there was a lot of movement. Okay. <laughs> Even if it was just internal, there's a lot of separation that happened in June between old and new. Okay. Gemini season, huge transition season. But when we move into cardinal cancer, this is when we have to push the gas pedal. This is when we have to give everything a push. All right. So this is why it requires a lot of effort from us. I mean, Gemini season can often require effort too, but it is more transitional. But cardinal seasons require us to be involved. All right. So we have the eight of cups combined with the six of swords, clearly there is like, you are leaving something behind. Clearly you are going beyond the comfort zone, which I mentioned with that page of coins intelligently, like this feels like a must, like Taurus must, must, must go into this unknown terrain. You have to try it. You have to experiment with it. You have to give it a go. Um, because it, it's just like, I think, I feel like it's something that your soul is just saying, if you want like bigger picture, big picture, if you really want what's up there, if the sky really is the limit, you have to start climbing. And that means you have to get higher on that ladder than you've ever been before. Cause if you haven't reached the sky yet, there's still more rungs on that ladder that you've got to go. Okay. So it is scary. And I think you're reaching new heights and I think you're reaching new levels of life experience that you may or may not truly be mentally prepared for, 
but I don't think it's premature. Like if you don't feel ready, it's like, yeah, you are. You are ready. (laughs) Okay, you definitely are ready. Uh, So scared or not, just keep going. Okay, but I'm going to talk about this five of wands in a similar way that I've spoken about it in many of the other zodiac sign readings. Every month, there's usually like one type of theme that comes out, and it gets extracted. And this is one of the themes that's been coming out. Okay, it's so fiery. And that's why I said that about the magician, like there is so much fire which is weird. I mean, maybe it's the activation of Leo, Mercury and Leo, (laughs) Mercury pre-shadow, right? Getting ready to retrograde, which will happen uh, later, but um, it will be pre-shadow this month. Um, Venus comes into Leo, Sun comes into Leo. So like, I think by the end of July, we're really going to feel that fire, probably even more so than we felt in Aries season, because this feels extremely passionate. Now, what I'm sensing is that there is going to be some type of event or conflict. Someone's going to say something or there's going to be a situation that occurs. And it is going to force you, Taurus, to declare, to stand up tall and use your voice and say, this is my goal. I am going to have it. I am going to attain it. I am going to reach it. And it's going to make you fight for what you want. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to put in the effort. You're going to have to push back against something. But you don't realize while you're in this, because it's kind of like a kerfuffle kind of thing, and it kind of, it sucks, right? This probably has a lot to do with Chiron retrograde, if I'm being honest with you. Chiron retrograde in Aries. Um, And this does feel like a little bit of a cluster, And it's just kind of like this messy thing, but it is actually a launch. It's a launch pad. And it is going to make you fight for what you want more than you already have fought for what you've wanted. And it's almost like a success is the sweetest revenge type of thing where, well, now you've said it, right? Well, now it's out there. Now people know about it. Now it's in the world and now you have to do it. And there might be some outside accountability now. I don't know if there was before, maybe there was, but now there seems to be more. Um, Like for example, let's say you actually do get in an argument with someone and you have to really defend your position and really defend what it is you want and defend what it is you're building. And now you, you can't go and fail now. (laughs) <laughs> you can't go and just not do it. You can't go and and not perform because now this person's watching and not that you're doing it for them, okay? I, I know that's not what's going on. You're doing it for you, but now it's like there's another pair of eyes on you and that actually could be one of the best things that ever happened because now... They're going to ask you a month from now, so how's it going? And you're going to want to have a really good answer because you fought so hard for it. Now, this might not be an actual argument with a person, okay? Another example that I've been using is let's say you have a big expense that comes up, right? And you have to kind of drain your bank account to give to that expense. You know, the reality of that is like, wow, okay, maybe I'm not really as financially secure as I thought I was. Or look at how quickly this could tank. Look at how quickly this could go wrong. Look at how quickly everything could, you know, disappear. Like it's kind of like a reality check. All right. And so when you have that reality check, again, it forces you to commit even harder to the thing that you even already committed to. And that's going to establish deeper roots. And that's cancer season, big time. And it's going to push you into that creative mode. And in a way, I look at this page of swords and I see you actually being liberated by the five of wands. Okay, that that issue, that circumstance, that fight, that problem actually is probably going to be one of the reasons why you succeed (laughs) because you're just, you just have to be more determined than you already were. It kind of takes that up a couple of notches, not just like one little notch, but like a couple. 
And um, it really ignites within you how much you actually really do want it because you fought so hard for it, you must really want it. And that's the thing with Leo, and I would say Cancer as well, but more so with Leo. So traditionally, the Leo archetype, right, ruled by the sun, the moon is the signifier of the soul and the soul's ambitions or the spirit's kind of purpose and reason for being here. So when the sun comes into Leo near the end of July, it's like it's not really difficult for us to access what our soul really wants. Um, it's clear to us. And usually there's a creative aspect to it. It's Leo, right? Creative. And so when this declaration happens, it's not like you're fighting for something that's wrong. It's not like you're fighting for something that's not good for you. Or f It's like people who have a bad habit and they will fight to the death to make sure you know, that they keep their bad habit. Oh, I'm not going to quit this. I'm not going to quit that because it's just who I am. You know, they fight to the death for something that's not good for them. But this is good for you. <laughs> this is deep. This is meaningful. This is going to grow. It's going to earn you money. It's going to help your career succeed. You know, all these things. So like this is a really beautiful pivot point. It's going to be kind of messy probably. You know, we do have Mars coming into that conjunction with Uranus as well in your sign, one of the last and final big Uranian conjunctions until we hit Taurus season of next year. But, you know, it's a powerful Mars-Uranus thing. So there's a ton of energy being injected. This is what I mean. July, there's a lot of injection going on. We're injecting fire, electricity, passion, enthusiasm, all sorts of stuff into your endeavors. So it's a pivotal moment. Okay, it truly is pivotal. So I want to pull out the clarifiers now because I have a feeling there's going to be more detail that comes out. So for those of you who are new, we're about to pull out a whole bunch of new cards. We're going to talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards. So if you want to join, you are absolutely more than welcome. All the info is in the description box in the pinned comment thread down below. So hopefully I will see you there. Let's go ahead and see if we can get more detail for Taurus for... July 2024. What does Taurus need to know? Beautiful. Ten of Cups. Love it. The Moon. Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands, really similar to the Five of Wands. We have the Hanged Man. The Emperor. Love that. Another page. Not minding the pages this month. I really like it. Feels like the pages, there's a lot of empowerment there. Two of Cups, Ten of Swords. The Sun for Temperance. Eight of Swords. Ace of Coins, Nine of Nine of Swords. So Ten of Swords, Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords. Two of Coins. Page of Coins, Knight of Cups, Ten of Wands, loving the Ten of Wands, Seven of Swords, Ten of Coins, Ten of Cups, and Ten of Coins. There's a lot at stake, okay? Uh, see what I mean? <laughs> Eight of Wands, it's pivotal. It sets things up, I promise. Hold on, I'm going to take this one for this one, and this one for this one. Okay. More masculine energy with those kings. Star. Three of Swords, also a big card that's been coming out this month, too. Another page. And the, the world. Love it. Okay. So Taurus, this is where we're going to pick up. So if you want to join, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Have an amazing July and I'll talk to you soon.